Hello everybody, this is Chaitali Mehta from Aryanth Academy and I welcome all my dear students over here to this YouTube channel of Aryanth Academy. Yes students, today we are going to deal with CET English. You can see it over there, right? Yes, CET which is very very important guys for you for your 11th standard admission. And in that, 25 marks is for English. So today, we are going to see how to crack and how to prepare for these 25 marks. So let's begin my friends. First, let us know what is the paper pattern. Yes, the paper pattern. You can see the first topic over there is grammar and language study. Yes, which is for 10 marks. All these questions are going to be in the MCQ format, my friends. Okay, the next one you can see over there is unseen passage. The unseen passage, it will be of some around 6 to 8 lines. And there will be some MCQ questions, some 6 questions. So I'm sure that you'll be able to deal with unseen passage. It will be easy for you. But then look at the third section. The third section over there is figure of speech, my friends. And this figure of speech, it is of whooping five marks. Don't worry. We are going to teach you figure of speech in a separate video. So we have devoted a separate video for that. The next one you have is a writing skill which is again for four marks. So this is how we get 25 marks, my friends. And yes, this video is gonna deal with the grammar part. So without wasting any time, let's start with the grammar part over there. Yes, the first topic over here in the grammar that we are gonna deal with is types of sentences. Types of sentences, my friends. Which are the four types of sentences? Quickly, we will revise it. So let's deal with the first type of sentence. The first type of sentence over here is an assertive sentence. Now, what are these assertive sentences? These assertive sentences, they begin with a subject, right? And followed by a verb and ends with a full stop right and the second type of sentence over there is an imperative sentence imperative my friends i call them as oscar sentences okay it's order suggestion command advice request oscar sentences the third one over there is exclamatory sentences so exclamatory sentences mean strong emotions and feelings over there and ending with an exclamation mark and the fourth type of sentence is an interrogative sentence. Interrogative sentences. And these are the questions and they end with a question mark. Right, my friends? So let's start with them. The first one, the first MCQ. Choose the correct alternative of the type of the following. They're asking you the type. Kill not your children because of poverty. Right? So... Always remember imperative sentences begin with the verb, okay? And here you can see a full stop. So it cannot be exclamatory. It cannot be interrogative. So only two options are there. One is assertive and second is imperative. And the sentence begins with a verb, kill. So it is imperative sentence. So the correct answer is imperative. The next one. Choose the alternative of the following sentence as a negative sentence. So, what is a negative sentence? A negative sentence means the sentence which has negative words. Which are these negative words? Yes, you guessed it right. No, not, never, neither, nothing, nor. So, is there any such negative word that you can find over there? Let's find out. I refuse to accept that the world is poor. This is the sentence. But when I add a negative word, the meaning should not change. Now I can find over there, 
I refuse to accept that the world is not poor. I refuse to accept that the world is poor. Will that be correct? No. So the correct answer is I do not accept that the world is poor. Right? This is the correct meaning. The other three doesn't have the same meaning. The meaning varies. So whenever we are changing from positive to negative, the meaning should not change. Okay, let's look at the next one, the third one over there. In the third one, it is given that choose the alternative of the following sentence as an exclamatory sentence. You have to change to exclamatory, right? And look at the sentence given. We have utterly failed our children. In exclamatory sentence, we have to give importance to the quality over there, to the emotion over there, right? So now, in this particular sentence, there is no article given. If an article is given, you can begin with what? But if the article is not given, you can begin with how? So now I have two sentences, A and D, beginning with how. So which one should I go for? You can look at the tense. What is the tense given? Have failed. So we have to use the same tense. Here it is giving are failing, so this doesn't go over there. How utterly we have failed our children. So D is the correct option. Fourth one. Choose the correct alternative of the type of the following sentence. You have to choose the type. Which type it is? We have made progress. You can see there is a full stop. And it begins with V. And V is a pronoun. So it's a subject. So it is an assertive sentence. So yes, you guessed it right. It is an assertive sentence over there. Come on, let's go for the next one quickly. Choose the correct alternative of the following sentences as an interrogative sentence. Interrogative sentence means a question, right? So it must have a question mark. Next, let's look at the sentence. Since its publication, it has sold millions of copies worldwide, right? So it has a soul. Look at the tense always. Because in any of these transformations, we are not changing the tense. We are not changing the meaning at all. Right? So because has is given, my question should also begin with has. So what is the option? Oh, I can see it in the C. Look at the C. Has it not sold millions of copies worldwide since its publication? So this was an easy choice because rest of the other are not beginning with has. So that's the trick you can use. Let's look for the next one over there. Again, here also you're looking for an interrogative sentence, right? And the sentence is, Hawkin had a dream that he was going to be executed. Hawkin had, now this is a simple past tense. So because it's a simple past tense, the question should also begin with a simple past tense, right? And if it is a positive sentence, it will make a negative question so I can see over here first two a and b these two I can see over there beginning with didn't but let's read the sentence didn't Hawkin had oh you can see over here there's a had given there are two past tense in the first option it's not possible it's wrong in one sentence, you cannot have two past tense. So the correct answer is B. B is the correct one and A is wrong. Did Hawkin have a dream that he was going to be executed? Right, students? Let's go ahead. Seventh one. Again over here, now choose the correct alternative of the following sentence as an assertive sentence. Normal sentence over there. The sentence given to you is, do they not play football? It's a question, it's an interrogative sentence, we are changing it into assertive. And do is given, it means that it is a present tense. So the answer also must be a present tense, my friends. Yes. And it's a negative question, so a positive answer must be there. Do they not play football? Oh, I cannot use should, I cannot use can. Yes, A, question, the option A is correct they play football is absolutely right because play is also present now the next one 
here choose the correct alternative of the following sentence as an interrogative sentence my friends again interrogative is coming the doctor said that yash will be fine now interrogative of course it cannot begin with the so first option is wrong and said is given said now said means it's a past tense so the question also must be past so it should begin with did so there are two options b and c but did didn't the doctor say or didn't the doctor said which will be correct yes you guessed it right the correct is b because there cannot be two past tense in one sentence right so option b is absolutely right so friends now let's go to the next topic and the next topic is non finite verbs as you all know very well that there are three types of non finite verbs now what are they let's find out okay so first one the first non finite verb is an infinitive infinitive now what are infinitives infinitives means two plus verb so before any verb if you add two it becomes infinitive for example if i write out to go to come to run to dance all these are infinitives they are very easy to find out in a sentence right my students okay now let's learn the next one okay the third one the second one over here we are going to go for is a participle a participle okay is of two types one is present participle and other is a past participle right now what's the difference the present participle is verb plus ing it means coming going running walking swimming right all these if they are acting like a verb if they are acting like an adjective it's a present participle okay past participle is the third form of verb and it ends with ed en or t most of the times right for example we have broken we have written okay all these are past participles now let's go for the third type what is the third type the third type over there is a gerund now what's a gerund a gerund is also having the structure of verb plus ing okay friends so you must be wondering oh present participle is also the same and gerund is also the same but their functions are different they look same but their function is very different so let's identify the first sentence i'm writing is i am swimming and the second sentence is swimming is my hobby right you can find in both the sentences the word swimming but the first one is a present participle over there why because the activity is going on it represents the action so the first one is a present participle whereas in the second sentence the action is not happening we are just talking about that action it is the name of the activity and the name of the activity is swimming so this is a jiren okay you can ask the question what also it's a trick it works sometimes what is my hobby you get the answer swimming and that's the trick you can use over there to identify okay friends so now let's go back over here to non finite verbs and just solve some of the mcqs first one i could stop taking the required classes that didn't interest me the underlined word is what is it infinitive gerund abstract noun or transitive verb so over here it's taking ing so ing means it can be either present participle or a gerund right you can see that only gerund is given over here as the option so straight away gerund right next one identify gerund or participle from the given sentence i love swimming in the summer time so the word swimming over here is given now 
Is it a gerund or a participle? I love what? What do I love? Swimming. That's the name of the activity. So it is a gerund, right? Next one, the eleventh one over there. Seeing is believing, right? So underline word is what? What is believing? Oh, I'm getting the answer to the question. What? Seeing is believing. So yes, it is a gerund again. Let's go for the next one. She played a losing game. Now, look at this word losing. Okay. Now, if I ask the question what? She played a game what? I don't get any answer over there. Right. It's not the name of the activity. Losing is not the name of the activity. It is describing the game. Which game? Losing game. Okay. So, this is a present participle. It is acting as an adjective, my friends. Okay, let's go further. She was afraid of hurting her mother's feelings. She was afraid of what? Which activity? Hurting. And yes, it is a jeering. Next one. We are born to verb. Oh, I can see two plus verb over there. So if it's two plus verb, definitely it's an infinitive, right? Okay, quick. Fifteenth one. Choose the correct alternative to pick out the infinitive in the sentence. Oh, they want an infinitive. It's easy. Two plus verb. Let's read. They knew then that the boy had not many days to live. Oh, I can find that to live is the correct answer. Next. Now, now friends, we are going to deal with another topic over there. That is the noun forms, verb forms, adjective forms and all. Let me tell you that noun forms are... Uh, those kind of words over there which we convert into a noun by adding sometimes suffixes right and the trick over there to identify a noun is that before a noun you can always add an article like the okay like you can see over here the noun form of ignore now I can't make a sentence with the ignore but definitely I can make a sentence with ignorance the ignorance of the child. Yes, I can make a sentence. So, ignorance is the noun form. So, for noun, just remember, you can add the article the before a noun. Right? Okay. The next one. The 17th one over there. The verb form of democracy. Now, before a verb, you can add to. To go, to run, to walk. Remember infinitives? Okay. So, two plus verb before a verb i can add two so two democracy nahi ho sakta two democratic bhi nahi ho sakta so what is possible is to democratize yes to democratize is correct the adjective form of information now before an adjective i can add to be to be is suitable right like to be tall to be dark uh, to be dark or to be handsome to be pretty so, before an adjective, you can add to be. So, to be information is not possible. To be informed is not possible. To be informative is correct. Right, my friends? Let's move ahead. Yes. And the last one over there is how to identify an adverb. Friends, it's very, very easy. Most of the time, you'll find that adjective plus ly becomes an adverb. Right? So, Adverb form of success. Yes, I can see over here successfully. Right? Successful is the adjective and successfully is the adverb. So, option C is correct. So, these are some of the tips which you can use it for your word formation. Let's go ahead. Fine. The next topic that you have over here is reported speech direct speech and indirect speech my friends you all know very well that whatever we are speaking if the same words are being quoted we call it as a direct speech and if we use other words okay to tell some third person that what was being said it's an indirect speech i'll give you one option my friends one example over here Okay, now when I say direct speech, suppose if I write down like this, he says, comma, inverted comma, I am busy. 
right? This is a direct speech because these are the exact words said by him, right? Now, if I change this to indirect speech, I'll write down, he says that, I'm adding a connector that he is busy. Now here I, you could see that I did not change the tense. Why I did not change the tense? Because the reported verb is in present tense. So when the reported verb is in present or in future, we don't change the tense of the sentence. Okay. If here it would have been said, then definitely I would have written over here was. Right friends? Now. There are different rules that we need to know when the reported verb is in past. How the tense would change. Let's go for that. So here, change in tense when the reported verb is in past. Right friends? How to change? Remember, if simple present is given in the dialogue, it will change to simple past. If present continuous is given, yes, we are changing to past continuous. Like is going is given, we are changing to was going. Okay. If present perfect is given, like has gone or have gone, we are changing to past perfect, that is had gone. Okay. Present perfect continuous has been eating, for example. Then had been eating. Past perfect continuous tense it would be. Now, Till here, the things are very simple, right? Everything present goes into corresponding past tense. But what if a simple past tense is given? For example, Ram said, comma, inverted comma, I visited my grandparents last Sunday. Okay, visited is already simple past tense. So now, how am I going to change it? Ram said that he had visited you have to change it to past perfect tense friends do not forget this this is the place where most of the students make mistake they don't change it to past perfect so always remember whenever you are past you have to add that had right similarly when you have this past continuous at that time also you have this had so you have to add had others you just have to remember it nicely like can changing to could may changing to might, will changing to uh, would, shall to should or would and must to have to. Let's go ahead. Okay, the list doesn't end over here. There is one more list. This changes to that. These changes to those. Today changes to that day. Tomorrow, the next day. Yesterday, the previous day. Ago, before, now, then, thus, so, come, go. Sometimes it changes to go, not always, depending on the sentence. So friends, all these rules you must know very well. And let's apply them in the MCQ. Look at the first one. Choose the correct alternative to the following sentence in indirect speech. So we are looking for indirect speech. Okay. I'm so sorry, Dr. Einstein, she said. So my first attention is she said. So it's in past tense. So yes, I have to change the tense over there. So she said to Dr. Einstein for apology, no. Here I will use this apologized because it's in past. She apologized to Dr. Einstein is correct. She told her mother, this is also wrong, we don't have that mother over there, okay. She asked Dr. Einstein for an apology, no. It will be she apologized to Dr. Einstein. Let's go ahead. Okay, next one. Choose the correct alternative. Again, will you come to Aunt Sushila's house and play for my brother? She asked at the end breathlessly. She asked. It's a question. So whenever you have question, the first thing you should know is you should not use the connector that. You are always using that. Said that, told that. Ye hum use nahi karenge. We will not use it. We will not use it. Okay. Instead of that, we will be using over here if or whether. Will you come? It's a question of yes or no. 
So we'll look for if or whether, where it is given. I can see if over here, I can see if over here, right? So we have two sentences where I can see if. So let's read them. At the end, she breathlessly said, is she saying or she is inquiring? She's asking. It is, she's asking, right? So the correct answer will be C. At the end, she breathlessly inquired if he would come to answer Sheila's house and play for her brother. So this is how in a shortcut way you can find out the answer quickly. Let's go for the next one. Okay, again over here, we are looking for the option. Forgive me is the sentence, said the bearded man in a weak voice. Forgive me. It's an imperative sentence. It's an Oscar sentence over there. Right? So what should I write? Should I write down exclaimed? No, I should not write exclaimed. Whenever it's an imperative sentence, again that connector that we are not going to use. Said that, told that, nahi aega. Instead we will use to plus verb. Right? See what is given. So to plus verb. I can see over here to forgive. I can here also see to forgive. But here it is given the bearded man said. No, he's not saying. He's asking for forgiveness. Right? So the bearded man asked is correct one. So option C is right. Yes, friends. Now let's go for tenses. Yes, tenses are very, very important. You all know very well. And there's a table over there before you. Now. You can see that every tense that is present, past and future has four sub-tenses. So quickly what we are going to look at is their structure, right? So simple present tense. What is simple present tense over there? Where only the root word is given. The root verb. Like go, goes, come, comes, work, works. If that is given, Ria goes to school. Okay, that's a simple present tense and it's a fact related to the present time. Okay, similarly, if it is a simple past tense, means it's a fact related to the past over there. Ria went to school. Okay, it has nothing to do with today. It, has, it is a fact related to the past. So we are using went. Now, future, the event has not even happened. You know, we are expecting it to happen in future. So, Ria will go to school. So, that is simple future tense. So, you can see that it's the word goes which is changing to past tense. That is when. And whenever we use future, we use either will or shall. Now, the next one is a continuous. The moment you see the word continuous, you should be able to see the word ing. And not just only ing, before the ing, there must be some helping verb. Which are these helping verb? Is, am, are, was, were. There are five helping verbs over there, which you have to use it. Okay, so Ria is going. Sirf ing nahi hai, saath mein is bhi diya hai. Just note that. Is going to school, so the action is happening, it's in present. Ria was going to school, it was happening in the past, the action was going on. And she will be going to school. It is expected that this action will be going on in the future. So you have will be and going. So not just only ing, along with ing, I need helping verb also. Next is a perfect tense. Perfect tense means the action is already over in the present time. Like Ria has gone to school. We can use either has or have. Because Ria is singular, I am using has. Okay. Next one, along with has and have, always remember we are using past participle. The third form of verb. We just now, in the previous slides, we studied about that, right? Like broken, written, eaten, gone, sung, rung. All these are past participles. Similarly, if you look at the past perfect tense, Ria had gone to school. So we use had. Okay. And then future perfect will have gone. So always you will see will have gone. So yes, it is a perfect tense. 
and now there's a combination of perfect and continuous means either you will have has a word along with that will be having ing okay so ria has been going to school so has tells that it is perfect ing says it's continuous so it's perfect continuous tense and has is present so present perfect continuous tense next is had been going had past perfect and going is ing so past perfect continuous tense and the third one you can see ria will have been going to school so will is future have is perfect so future perfect and ing so future perfect continuous tense okay students i hope this is clear the structure let's move quickly to solve some of them okay the first one what are we looking at change the tense we are looking for changing the tense into what past perfect tense right so past perfect means had plus past participle so i'm going to search for had okay i can see there are two options over here had seen and had been okay let's see we had seen a tree and here it is we had been seeing is given here ing is also given but we don't want that ing so the correct answer is b okay next one here we have to change the tense into present perfect tense okay present perfect means has or have plus past participle so the sun had set is the question so i need has so i look for has option oh my god i have three options over there so i have three has been setting no i don't want that ing so if this is wrong meanwhile the sun has set and it has become cool here had become as given here has become as given and the next one has set and it has become cool so both of them correct over there it is the same meanwhile the sun has set and it has become cool next one okay let's go for the next option here also change the tense and past perfect tense we are supposed to change into the solutions are emerging present continuous tense right friends and here are emerging is given so uh, here we are looking for past perfect tense past perfect means had i should use had so solutions had emerged is correct right friends chal let's move ahead now next one change the tense again into present continuous tense so we are looking for continuous so i should have ing with either is am or are so let's look out for some of the ing's over there the book offered is the question so now i can see ing over here i can see ing over here i can see over here also but i want present continuous friends do we have any present continuous over here come on tell me no we don't have present continuous over here right so this was a googly for all of you we don't have any present continuous the present continuous correct answer would be that the book is offering will be the correct answer okay the book is offering will be the correct answer right okay come on let's go ahead now next one the question given over here is change the tense again and future perfect continuous tense right okay let's see how was learning is given past continuous changing to future perfect continuous future perfect and continuous so yes i must have have and ing also yes i can see this over here he will have been learning so i i have a future i have have and ing so option b is correct okay friends so now let's go to the next topic over there and the next topic is change the voice so now let me tell you that there are two types of voices which you have studied one is an active voice other is a passive voice so let's understand them yes an active voice it has a structure of subject followed by a verb and an object 
right? And a passive voice is just reverse of it. We begin with an object, then we have verb and the subject. Okay, but when we are doing this transformation, there are two things we have to take care of. Do not change the tense. Do not change the meaning of the sentence. The tense and the meaning must be the same, right? For example, if I write down, Ram killed Ravana. Okay, now my first attention should be at the verb. The verb is killed. Now, who is killing is the subject. Yes, it's the Ram who is doing the action. So, Ram is the subject and the action is done on a Ravana. And so, Ravana is the object over there. Okay, you can call Ram as doer also. If not subject, you can call him a doer also. Now, this is an active voice. If I want to change it to passive, I need to switch both of them. I need to switch over there, Ram and Ravana. Okay, so I'll begin with Ravana, I'll end with Ram, but I just cannot write down Ravana killed Ram, it will change the meaning, right? So I have to add a suitable helping verb. Now because the sentence, if you'll see over there, is actually past tense, killed is a past tense. So active and passive, both of them would be in past tense, simple past tense. So my answer would be Ravana was killed and I'm adding by a preposition by Ram. Now it makes sense. So active and passive, both of them must have same tense. Okay, so let's look at the tense part over there. Here I have taken active sentence as Ram eats an apple. Ram eats an apple. Okay, it's a simple present tense. So active and passive should go together. So passive also will take simple present tense. An apple is eaten by Ram. Always remember in passive voice, we use past participle. So the past participle will not tell me which tense it is. It is only the helping verb which will tell me which tense it is, right? So now, instead of eats, if I write down Ram ate an apple, past tense. So passive also will be in the past. An apple was eaten by Ram. If it is future, Ram will eat an apple. Then even the passive will be in future, an apple will be eaten by Ram. Okay, are you understanding the balance over there? Right? Now, if active has ing, Ram is eating, continuous tense, you can see ing, present continuous or past continuous. Even the passive will have that ing form. Okay, so an apple is being eaten by Ram. You can see that balance, being. Okay, now if the active voice has a perfect tense over there, whether present perfect, past perfect or future, the similar perfect tense will be in the passive also. Like Ram has eaten an apple. An apple has been eaten by Ram. So I'm adding that been over there. Okay. Has been eaten. Or if it is past perfect, had been eaten. So this is what you need to know over here. That when we are changing the voice, we are not supposed to change the tense. We are not supposed to change the meaning over there. Right friends? So let's start with the MCQs. Here we begin. Okay, what is given? Alternative to change the voice. Okay, we are supposed to change the voice over there. So let's identify the voice first if we want to change it. The heaviness of being successful was replaced by the lightness of being a beginner again. Okay, so we have this was replaced. So was tells me it's a simple past tense. There is no ing over here and there is no has have had and was replaced. And so it is a simple past tense followed by a preposition by. It's a passive voice. It's a passive voice. So I have to change it to active voice. So what I'll do, I'll switch over there. So I have to begin with the lightness of being a beginner again. Okay. So lightness of being a beginner again. So which one it should be? The lightness of being a beginner 
replace the heaviness of being successful right students okay so the first one is the correct one over there the second one is changing the meaning here look at this the meaning is changing so the second one is wrong the third one is given a present tense which is wrong over here so the first one is the correct one okay let's move ahead choose the correct alternative over here change the voice again so we are changing the voice again i have felt their broken spirits have felt okay their broken spirits so their broken spirits will come first so it's present perfect so present perfect upar hai to niche bhi present perfect hi aana chahiye their broken spirits have been felt by me or had been felt no had will not come it's a past perfect it cannot come this is a simple past this is ing no the first one is correct okay i have that balance have been felt next one okay change the voice again and here we have let us globalize compassion you can see that this sentence over there is imperative sentence so when imperative sentence is given let's see how to change let's let us globalize compassion okay so we are talking about let globalize let compassion be globalized by us or let compassion by us be globalized what should be the correct answer yes the first one is correct let compassion be globalized by us and not the second one which is sounding wrong okay let's move ahead now the next one over here again change the voice so look at the sentence stephen hawking has written or co-written a total of 15 books has written present perfect tense so even in the passive we are looking for present perfect tense let's look at the option here it is had been no it's wrong have been can i have have been yes why not has and have both can be used in present perfect tense but let's read the sentence a total of 15 books because it is 15 it's a plural so have been written is correct okay let's move ahead next one change the voice i first read this novel years ago read past tense so answer also must be in the past tense this novel was read by me years ago okay this was i can find is this correct this novel was been oh no was been is a wrong english so the first one is the correct option so we are having past in both of them now let's look at the sixth one friends change the voice is again we are looking for and the dolphin will give me all i need to free orleans will give is simple future tense so simple future we are changing into simple future only right so who will give me dolphin will give so that's a subject dolphin will give me so me is the object so my sentence must begin from i okay i will be given okay i'm having just one option over there that's wonderful i will be given oh yes that's perfect future future both of them simple future i will be given all i need to free orleans by the dauphin so the first one is the correct answer let's move ahead friends okay so now the next topic that we have over here and this is degrees of comparison i'm sure that degrees of comparison you would have read many times so let's quickly revise it degrees of comparison yes we have positive degree comparative degree and superlative degree right let's understand them a little better before we go to mcqs right so when i have a positive degree a positive degree means suppose if i write down the word tall okay it's a positive in comparative i will write on taller 
in superlative, I'll write down tallest. Right? So tall, then ER, taller, and tallest over there. It's superlative. Sometimes we don't use that ER or EST, but we use more. Like for example, if I write down important, then I will write down more important and most important. And there are some adjectives which has very different uh, forms over there. Like you know very well, good, if I write down good, you know it is better and best. So better is comparative and best is superlative degree. Okay friends, so these are the basic things that you should know. And now we are going to deal with the transformation also. Okay, so let's understand that. Fine. Let's come back to this table over there and understand the transformation. Now, when I talk about superlative degree, then superlative degree can be of two types. I call it as type A and type B. What's the difference? Look at the structure, friends. In this type A, Maricom is the best woman boxer. Okay? When I say the best what do i mean i mean that there is no other boxer as good as she is right so she's the best over there so she's the only one but when i say one of the best what do i mean i mean that if there are say 100 boxers women boxers in the world then out of those 100 there are few boxers you know some five six of them who come in this elite category of being the best, out of which one is Maricom. So she's not all alone in that elite class, right? There are some few women boxers. So she's one among them. Okay, so the meaning is different because the meaning is different, my friends. And that's the reason why here the changing from superlative to positive and comparative will also change. So let's check. First one, let's deal with type A. So when type A is given when she's the best, in comparative degree, I will write down Maricom is better than any other women boxer. So any other is my clue. Okay, I'll use any other. And in positive degree, I will begin with no other. No other woman boxer is as good as Mary Com. So as good as this positive degree over there. And I begin with no other. One more thing you should know friends is that whenever I'm using as good as. Look at the structure. Okay. This is positive degree structure. So in the positive degree you will always find like this. As tall as. As big as. As wonderful as. Right? Whereas in comparative degree, you will find than. Than is used. Better than, greater than, bigger than is what you'll find in comparative degree. And in superlative degree, you will always find the article the, either the or one of the, any of the formation would be there. Right? And in type B, you can see one of the. So when one of the is given, we are not using any other, but we are using many other. Right? The other option is most of the other is also correct. Mericom is better than many other or most of the other women boxers. And positive degree, we begin with very few. Very few women boxers are as good as Mericom. Okay? So we are beginning with very few. Now, there is one more significant difference in both the types over there, you can see in type B, we are using plural, women boxers, women boxers, women boxers. Right, my friends? But in type A, we use singular. So all these are the tips and tricks for solving degrees. Let's go for it. Okay, the superlative form of good is, yes, we just now discussed it is best. The next one. Choose the correct alternative of the following sentence where the degree of comparison of a sentence is changed to comparative degree. So we have to look for a comparative degree. Okay, and the sentence is 
he was the best table tennis player i can see the so it's type a right so i'm going to use over there any other in comparative degree so i'm going to look for any other where can i find some any other okay i can see over here i can see over here in the option c and d i can find let's read the sentence he was better than any other table tennis player in the school he was good oh they have not changed the degree in the d one so c is correct we want better and not good okay let's move ahead now the next one over here we are going to deal with is modal auxiliary yes friends modal auxiliary what are they it tells you the mood of the speaker over there is he talking about possibility is he talking about some advice is he giving or a suggestion is he talking about or maybe he's taking a permission or is talking about ability all these functions we come to know from modal auxiliaries so some of the common modal auxiliaries are like can could may might shall should must all these come in modal auxiliaries so come let's uh, solve some of the mcqs first one choose the correct alternative of modal auxiliary in the function in the following sentence she couldn't perform well in the opera she couldn't perform well so now is it talking about possibility obligation ability or certainty no she was not able to do it so it's we are talking about her ability over there so ability is the correct answer next one choose the modal auxiliary from the following sentence i returned coke bottle so that i could buy food with the money we have to find the modal auxiliary so of course it's not so that it's not return it's not with that so the correct answer is good one more identify the modal auxiliary in the sentence oh we have to just pick up according to hokin god could not have created the universe so yes we have could not over here so could not is the correct answer there are so many other modal auxiliaries like must should need to can all these you have to keep in your mind and may one the modal auxiliary may is the very very appropriate word for permission okay let's move ahead now friends now we are going to understand what are conjunctions okay you know very well that conjunctions means they are used for joining okay it's used for joining they are joining words over there so these joining words are of two types coordinating conjunctions and subordinating conjunctions so now how to remember them the coordinating conjunctions can be used for compound sentences you can use it for making compound sentences where subordinating are used for making complex sentences right you should remember them now how there is an acronym for you guys no fat boy seen a fat boy was playing in a building compound now he is not seen no fat boy seen in compound okay so the list is over there you can see this is coordinating subordinating now what is a subordinating conjunction how to remember then what bites susan oh it's complicated i don't understand this line right so it's complex what bites susan here wh means w which questions what when why which where how who as after that than because before all these you should know the entire list over there so friends you remember the list which is given over here and you will be able to solve all the questions which are related to subordinating and coordinating conjunctions let's go ahead okay an example of coordinating conjunction is coordinating no fat boy seen so and yes and is the correct answer abdul likes to read but he has no money to buy books but okay we have this but no fat boy seen but it's a coordinator it's a coordinator next as soon as the work uh, they finished his work he went home okay as soon as 
what is it as soon as we saw in what bites susan it's a coordinator over there no it's a subordinator next one do not call me unless there is an emergency okay so over here yes unless we find in what bites susan and so it is a subordinator over there jim wants to go for a movie or or is giving or is again a coordinator yes let's move ahead now there are some clauses also which they can ask you clauses means the there are it's a part of a sentence over there there are two types of clauses main clause and subordinate clause there are two types of clauses over there and subordinate clauses are also of variety of types like noun clause adjective clause and adverb clause like they will ask you like this you can see choose the correct alternative of the type of the clause of the underlying part of the statement i should go back if only to read and write so if only to read and write over here is a subordinate clause why because it is beginning with a subordinator so if it begins with a subordinator it's a subordinate clause by friends okay now which type it is if only i re to read and write is it talking about time to go back no is it talking about any cause no is it talking about any contrast is there any opposite no it is talking about condition so the option c is correct that on this particular condition i should go back okay next one let's see one more identify the type of clause of the underlying part he decided to go to a hermit who was widely renowned for his wisdom who was widely renowned for his wisdom we have this wh question who and it is a subordinator so this is a subordinate clause okay but which type it is now who was widely renowned kiske bare mein baat ho rahi whom are we talking about this part of the sentence is talking about the hermit it is talking about the sage and hermit is a noun so something that talks about a noun is an adjective so the correct answer is adjective clause next one okay let's go for the eighth one when i was a very young man i was invited to dine at the house of a philanthropist okay when i was okay it's talking about when wh question subordinate clause it is when i am am i talking about time when i was very young yes i am talking about the time so it is adverb clause of time okay let's go ahead as physical control over his body diminished the effects of his disease started to slow down now here i can find as given over here right so as is a subordinator so this part is a subordinate clause right so which type of subordinate clause it is as the physical control over his body diminished over there it's a reason you know because the control diminished so it's a reason the effects of his disease started to slow down next to protect the temples and artifacts unesco launched an international campaign the above statement is what is it a simple compound complex or all the above so no it cannot be all the above right so now how to identify whether it is a simple sentence it's a compound sentence or a complex sentence then let me tell you friends in a simple sentence you have just one finite verb so if you have just one finite verb it's a simple sentence over there okay let us understand this okay so a simple sentence means one verb okay one verb now suppose if i write down a sentence over here ram has bought a red car it has only one verb and so this is a simple sentence now suppose if i write down a compound sentence then the compound sentence will have two verbs plus one coordinator to join it 
coordinator means no fat boy seen that list okay now suppose if i convert the sentence into a compound sentence i'll write down i'll split the sentence into two ram has bought a car will be the first sentence and the second sentence will be that the car is of red color right so now over here i have two sentences i can join it by using a coordinator ram has a car and i can just simply write down over here and i can join with and it is instead of car i can simply write down it is of red color so this is how i can change it to compound sentence and the next one is a complex sentence now what's a complex sentence we have been seeing clauses so all those examples of clauses over there of main clause subordinate clause are complex sentences it will also have two verbs plus one subordinator so if i want to change this sentence a compound sentence into a complex how should i do i'll write down like this ram has a car has bought a car which is of red color which is of red color so i am using over here you can see which which is a subordinator and it has two verbs and one subordinator so that's a complex sentence so in simple a simple sentence means one verb a compound sentence means two verbs in minimum complex also means two verbs in minimum and in compound you will have a coordinator no fat boy seen in compound and in complex you will have subordinator what bites susan right my friends so come let's solve some of the examples so now let's see question number 10 over there to protect the temples and artifacts unesco launched an international campaign so here friends we have just one finite verb and what is that one finite verb and that is launched right so because it is just one finite verb my choice is very clear it is a simple sentence okay friends come on let's move ahead now the next one the project cost about 80 million us dollars and 40 million us dollars came from 50 different countries the above statement what it is now if you see there are two verbs over there cost and came there are two verbs joined with the help of and 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 is a coordinator and that's the reason why it is a compound sentence okay friends come on let's go ahead next one choose the correct alternative to convert now here we are talking about conversion of the sentence what we are supposed to convert it into a complex sentence so a complex sentence means it must have a subordinator what bites susan hona hi chahiye right and two verbs in minimum so let's find out he bent down and picked up the paper so i have two verbs bent and picked in the question joined by and but now i don't want and okay so now i have to look for two verbs and one subordinator so here i can find yes after he bent down he picked up the paper so i have two verbs over here and i have after which is a subordinator so c is a correct one the a option is incorrect because he, though after is given here bending is not a finite verb it is a participle and so it's wrong okay so first option is wrong so the c is the correct answer let's move ahead friends now the next one choose the correct alternative of the following sentences as a simple sentence right so we are looking for a simple sentence over there simple sentence means just one verb so which has just one verb over there let's see so here it is again the most important thing is to have the courage and follow your heart so here there are two verbs so it's not what we need the most important thing is to have the courage to follow your heart here i have just one verb one finite verb that is is so b is a correct one okay let's move ahead 
Yes, friends. So this is how you can identify over there uh, which is the simple compound and complex sentences. So friends, now let's go to the next topic. And the next topic over here is parts of speech. Right? Parts of speech. So I'm sure that you have learned this topic many a times earlier in your earlier grades. Right? So there are different parts of speech, friends, like noun, pronoun, verb, adverb, adjective, preposition, conjunctions, interjection. All these are called as the parts of speech. Okay, with the help of these words, we frame one sentence. Okay, a sentence is formed because of them. Right? So now what are we going to do over here is there would be some words in the sentence where they will underline and they will ask you which part of speech it is. Is it a noun? Is it a verb? Is it an adjective? Let's find out. Come on, let's quickly go for it. First one. We are going to see a play tonight at the theater. The underlined word is what? Now look at this word play very carefully. The word play can be used as a noun also and it can be used as a verb also. Okay. So now you have to be very very careful and identify whether it is a noun or is it a verb. Right. We are going to see a play is given. That article a will help you because articles we can add before a noun and not before a verb over there. So before a noun, we can add over there an article. So a play, so it is a noun. So a play over here doesn't mean playing, but it means a drama over there, right? So this is a noun. Next one, question number two. Ritu Raj and his friends had gone to watch a movie the underlined word had gone to watch. You can see before this word watch, there is to given to us. To plus verb. Remember infinitives to go, to come, to run, to walk, to swim, to dance. So it is a verb. So let's look at the fourth sentence over there. The progress of novel inseparably links the old man and the marlin. Right? The progress. Progress, right? Is it a noun? Is it a verb over there? That's the question. And the hint is that you can see before the word, there is an article, the. As I told you previously, that articles are used before a noun. So immediately you should know that this is a noun over there. So B is the correct answer. Let's look at the fifth question now. Now, what are we supposed to do over here? Choose the correct alternative to frame WH question to get the underlined part as the answer. Now, we are doing the reverse. The answer is given and we are going to frame a question to get that answer. Okay, the answer should be the underlined part and it should be a WH question. So, what is a WH question? What, when, why, which, where, how, who? You have to begin your question with these words over there. So let's check. The sentence is, my uncle died before I was born. Okay. So now the first thing that you have to notice is the verb is died. It is past tense. The second before I was born is talking about time. Okay. So now how? No. How did the uncle die? No. It is not answering that. Where? It is not talking about place. So the correct answer is when. It is talking about time. When did. See it's past tense given over here. So when did your uncle die is the correct answer. And friends when you frame question you should remember that there should not be two past tense in one sentence. Right. When you're using did use the root word that's die and not died. So this is the right option. Let's move ahead to the next question. Yes, the next one over here. Again, the underlying part, you have to frame a question. I took them out to a nearby restaurant for dinner. Okay, I took them out. So took, 
is the tense, that's the past tense, and took them out to a nearby restaurant is the answer. So we are talking about a place of taking somewhere, so how it cannot be correct. When, of course, we are not talking about time. Why did you take them out for a dinner or where did you take them out for a dinner? So yes, it is talking about place. And so where is the correct answer? Where did you take them out for dinner? Next one. The seventh one over here. Again, you can see a WH question has to be framed and the sentence is, the project will take 15 minutes, right? 15 minutes is not one specific time, but it's a duration. It's a duration, my friends. So duration for that, what are we supposed to use? Will it be using why? No. Will it be using what time will the project take place? No. But I can see how long in the first place. How long will the project take? And the question has will, which is future. So here also it should be future tense. How long will the project take? The project will take 15 minutes. So this is the correct option. Let's go for the next one. Yes. Now the next one over here is as soon as and no sooner than transformation that we are doing. Okay, friends. So now when we go for this transformation, there is one thing that you all need to know. Whenever we use no sooner than, we are supposed to use helping verb. So immediately after no sooner, there must be a helping verb. Now what is this helping verb? We can use do or we can use does, we can use did. But it will all depend on the sentence. If in the sentence already a helping verb is given, use the same helping verb. But if it is not given, you can go to do, does or did. Let's find out. Let's read this sentence over there. As soon as she finished one project, she started the next. So instead of as soon as, now we have to replace this sentence with no sooner. So let's see how. You can see all four of them beginning with no sooner. Now let's go to the tense. Finished is the word given. So it's a simple past tense. So of course, do, does or did. My choice is did. So I can see over there in the first two options, I can see did. In third and fourth, I have had. So both of them are wrong. They are now not in my choices. The next one, no sooner did she finish. Right? And the second one is finished. As I told you earlier, in one sentence, in one simple sentence, we cannot have two past tense. So B is wrong. The correct answer is A. You can read the entire sentence. No sooner did the, she finish one project, then she started the next. Let's go for the next one now. Here, choose the correct alternative using as soon as. So now we are going for the reverse. As soon as is the option. Okay, let's see. There are two sentences. The bus arrived is the first sentence. At once the passengers rushed to board it. Right? So we will begin with as soon as the bus arrived. Look at the tense. The tense is simple past tense over there. So we have to use simple past tense in the answer also. So as soon as the bus arrived. Yes, here I can find out the simple past tense. So this is the correct answer as the other will arrive had arrived are wrong. Let's go for the next one. Again, choose the correct alternative using as soon as. Again, we are looking for as soon as. My friend saw me and stopped the car at once. As soon as my friend saw me, he stopped the car. No, in the question we have stopped. So we have to use stopped, right? As soon as my friend saw me, he stopped. Oh, I can find the stop. I can see so. And I can also see as soon as. So this is the correct answer. As in the third option, I can see over here. There's a will stop, which is a wrong tense over here. So friends, this is it for the day. And in this video, we have covered lot many topics over there of grammar. And I'm sure that this video is going to help all of you to prepare yourself 
for the upcoming CET exam. I wish all my dear students over there all the best for the exam and wait for the other videos. We will be uploading other videos too which will give you more insight about this CET. Thank you so much my friends and goodbye. Take care.